Good morning, good morning. We're back, we're back. Welcome to Sewing Street with me, Vicky Carroll. Oh, you are going to love today's show. We've had so many people request for a certain demo and the gorgeous Victoria Carrington is here to show us binding, all kinds of binding as well. So it's going to be brilliant. Now, welcome to the show. Those of you that are joining us maybe for the first time, if you've stumbled upon us, uh, Freeview, our brand new channel. Our new home is Channel 74. Uh, those of you that have managed to, to reach Unity TV and get us, uh, thank Thank you for doing so. Channel 74 every morning, 9 a.m. live every day for a whole hour. And, and in a couple of weeks, we'll be two hours and three hours and four hours. So fingers crossed. Uh, we're just going to keep growing and growing. But it's brilliant to, to have a whole hour with you live every day. Also, you saw that we're on Sky. We're on Sky. Do you remember that famous scene in the royal family, the, uh, the, the Christmas day when he got Sky and it was really exciting? That's how I feel when we were on Sky yesterday. It's like, yeah. 670, 670 is the channel on Sky. I know so many people have been asking me where we are on Sky. It's 670. Uh, also, you can watch online. Now, there's two ways of watching online. You, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can just watch on YouTube. If you type in Sewing Street TV, then you can watch back all of the demonstrations that we've been doing over the past week or so. Um, we have been... We are so new. I mean, we are so new. This is uh, literally... Day eight, day eight or nine, nine, that's it. But all of the demonstrations will be going onto our YouTube channel so you can sew along when you get your kits and you get your products home as well, which is brilliant. Uh, if you go onto our website, at the moment, as I say, we're a brand new channel. Uh, we are constantly progressing and working on, on new things. So at the moment, we're working on a fancy new website. Uh, we have got the, the www.sewingstreet.com. That won't change, but at the moment, it will redirect you to uh, a, a jewellery maker, our sister channel website, which looks like this. So it will, it, we've got our own page on there, which you can watch. Let me click play and it will take us to the live show. There we are, live right now. Uh, you can sign up to our newsletter. Our lovely managing, uh, our, our lovely marketing manager, Hayley, will keep you in the loop of everything that's going on via our newsletters, any offers and any news will be there. And then underneath us on the web uh, will be all products. I've, I'm on page two, aren't I? Let me click to page one. I've gone too far. I'm jumping ahead because I could see, look, these beehives, we had to put them into the set today. You could, we couldn't not, because they're just gorgeous. We absolutely love them. Victoria just said to me, you look really summery. You've got your springtime top on. It's so miserable out there. I'm like, right, I'm diving into my spring wardrobe. I'm getting the bees out on set. We're going straight into spring. I'm bypassing. I'm just in denial that this is so rainy outside. But anyway, so that was there. But if I go to page one, um, if I... It didn't load straight away, but underneath us, oh, you should be able to see yesterday's um, crafty, crafty products, which is brilliant as well. So all of the, the products from today's show are listed already underneath, so you can start buying. Did you notice, have we got freezer paper today? You can start making the most of that. There's your crafty products as well. There's the whole bundle, which was brilliant for £29.96. Uh, Five pounds saving on that. If you missed the show, you can watch Noel from Crafty Products talking about the gyro cut, which is just a brilliant tool for plique and fussy cutting. Uh, what else have I got to tell you? Right, Facebook. It's such a lovely community here. It really, really is. I, in fact, I met gorgeous Rachel yesterday. I must give her a shout out. Uh, Rachel Magnolia. She came to see me in Swindon last night. So I, I know that She's a big part of the, the, the Facebook page as well. We've got our community on there, which is the Sewing Street fan page. This one is our Sewing Street official page. So if you do click follow on that, give us a give us a like, and we'll keep you in the loop again on Facebook. But the fan page, again, is a great way of sharing your, your tips, sharing your projects. Uh, just... It's a lovely community, meeting like-minded people, like-minded crafters all around the country. It's brilliant. Right, so... Uh, this is how you get in touch with us today during the interactive show via Facebook. I've got the iPad here, so if you've got any messages, send them in for me and Victoria. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good, thank you. you? It's, I haven't seen you since... Well, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago when we were doing our pre records <laughs> Yes, I know. Uh, we've had a lot of people messaging in, so we need to yeah. get you doing some binding demos. Because yeah. I think whenever... Obviously, when we were sewing quarter and we were doing lots of quilting demos, we focus on the block... And then we always had to rush and bypass 
Yes, exactly. Doing. Yeah. So it's a good opportunity to kind of do some more technical shows at this point. So, um, yeah, I hope it will be useful. And thanks for all the messages from people for the seminal stuff that we did. And there were loads of Yeah, Facebook, loads of people there? made the little gift bags and um, what else? Oh, the pin cushions yeah. as well. So it was lovely to see that everybody had had a go. I saw that lots of people were using the seminal technique in their borders and quilts. And yeah, all sorts yeah, of cushions. bags and stuff. Yeah. And yeah. There's yeah, lots of really pictures, good. So. so thank you for that. So, should we open these out together? Because yeah. we've got some panels. Now, these are huge panels, aren't they? Yeah, they? yeah. They are exclusive to us, and we're going to be working with these with Victoria today. Um, you're using the sunset colour, aren't you? But I love these blues. It's actually called azure, um, and it's absolutely huge. Yeah. So this is sort of a take on a, a jelly roll or a design roll, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right. So you cut out the individual strips, um, and they're about 54 inches long, so much longer than if you were cutting with the fabric yeah. on a normal bolt of fabric um, and they're obviously two and a half inches wide like a design roll as well so do a lot do you find that a lot of uh, patterns call for two and a half inch strips with yeah quilting? yeah yeah so a lot of patchwork patterns two and a half squ inch squares strips things like that and then obviously for the binding why we've got them in the show today because mm -hmm. obviously you use two and a half inch strips for your binding as so, well so i mean even though these are pattern you can still start playing around with your binding and using some of these geometric prints bet they look yeah, really funky exactly yeah so you've got the kind of gradient effect, the ombre effect. Yeah. So you can, I'll show you some different things you can do with the, on, on the binding. On telly, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what your television is like at home, but on my monitor, it doesn't come across as well on screen. No. But it's actually a real beautiful, subtle ombre, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you go from like the teals to the darker blues at the top. If I, in fact, we hold like the, the, the top next to the bottom, yeah. so you can see sort of the difference in colour. That's the quality of the printing as well, to be able to get such a subtle gradient colour variation and to be able to have how many different one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen different prints as well. Yeah. They're all different geometric prints, aren't they? Yeah. So if I was doing, say, a big quilt, um, I would probably use eight or nine um, width of fabric strips. This is longer than that. So, yeah. I mean, you could get two good sized quilt bindings out of this. Wow. So. Depending on the technique you use, but we'll talk about that in a bit. There you go. So value for money. That is brilliant. £19.99. Because I know that a lot of um, uh, design rolls can cost sort of £30, £35, £40, depending on what designer yeah. you're looking at as well. These are exclusive to us. Uh, really beautiful in this colourway as well. I know how popular blue colourways always are. And they're going to go with lots of your solid colours and lots of the fabrics you've got in your stash, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Gorgeous. So that's the Azure exclusive to Sewing Street, 100% cotton, printed beautifully. And because you've got all of these different colours, I think this is, and the size of the strips, it's going to be perfect for, for today's show in particular. So the Sunset Colours is the one that you, you got home, yeah. hasn't it? So should we have a look at that one? Because I've not seen it yet. I know that this one um, has already been going on the website. It's already been going. Oh, gosh. Remember that big yellow thing in the sky, the sun? This is what it reminds <laughs> me of. Oh, I know, yeah, they're going, I have no idea what you're on about. That beautiful sunset. <gasps> the gradient on that one is beautiful. Sorry about the creases. <laughs> We need um, we need to uh, get our uh, Victor borrow Victoria's iron. She's bought in for us. <laughs> it's only a little one. Take a while. <laughs> <laughs> that is gorgeous. I'm thinking Bargellos or around the world quilts as well. These are great. Yeah, yeah. Lots of Pamaniki Lintot designs are used from jelly rolls or design rolls, aren't they? Yeah, and there's um, the jelly roll race quilt as well, where you oh. can just join them end to end and just continuously sew. So that's that's quite a fun one to do. So if you just Google that and there's loads of YouTube videos on that, which is great for it. And then you could always just, I mean, you could always just sew it together in strips and that's a nice kind of baby size yeah. quilt or a lap quilt. Yeah. So, so would, you, would you cut between these? I like the fact that they've left a small gap between as well. So then you, you, you've got a slight room yeah, for error yeah. almost. Yeah, you? exactly. So if you've got it a bit skew if on your board, then yeah. at least you've got that allowance. So yeah, yeah. but I or found them easy to cut. Could I hold it this way? Could I do binding this way with, with little striping, strips? With yeah, the striping? You could. you could. You do whatever you want really, can't you? There you go, get creative. £19.99, sorry, my face in the way, I hate that. <laughs> £19.99. This one, very, very popular already, the most popular already. I think that gradient of sunsets and summer, it will yeah. be here soon. It will be here soon. Okay, 
Shall we do the last one, which is the berry? This is beautiful as well. See, this is quite a, a how do I put this? Like a, a grown up pink. Those of yeah. you that aren't pink, pink people, actually, this is quite uh, a grown up pink, isn't it? You've got beautiful purples in there. I love these though, they're lovely. Mm. Again, all of those different geometric prints. I suppose when you're quilting, you start to think about things like that, smaller, different scales of printing, yeah, and different exactly. textures of your quilt. Yeah, you? yeah, so these would really kind of stand out in a, in a block because they're yeah. quite solid, yet they've got a slight pattern to them, like a tone on tone pattern. So you can almost use it as uh, if you've got some of your uh, Tildes or Tulas or you know, your really big bold prints, these could almost work as like your blenders, yeah, couldn't they? Yeah. They're gorgeous. £19.99. And, and just as Victoria said, remember, this is wide, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. It's 150. It's. Go on. 140 centimetres wide. 140 centimetres wide by 100. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the strips are about 54 inches as Gosh. opposed to 44, which is the normal width of fabric. Amazing. Loads of fabric there for your money. Just to remind you, once again, it is exclusive to Sewing Street. They're all extremely limited now, and these are great for binding, but also just to have in your stash, aren't yeah. they? The range of colour that you've got there is fantastic. I'm thinking for English paper piecing as well. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the more sort of ditzy scale prints, it's going to look nice for, for, small, for small pieces, isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes you just need a little bit of fabric um, to go with something, like a small project. But yeah. you're not necessarily going to have every single one of those shades of pink. And if you just want to match a particular one, then it's great for that yeah, as well. absolutely. If you've got yeah. a big pile, this is great to just start matching up. And look at the different graduation in colour. I'm just holding the top to the bottom so you can mm. see that really subtle ombre. But actually, you've got two sort of completely different colours there. From really deep, deep purples to those beautiful sort of baby pinks, love them. Okay, make oh, the most of those. That, oh no, <laughs> fabric fitness, there we go. Okay, so Hannah, what next? Should we get going into demo? Because, okay. Because um, as I say, this is something that we get a lot of people messaging in about, especially I see so many on Facebook, friends of mine that have started quilting have gone, Right, I don't know what to do now. Yeah. I've done the patchwork on the top. Yeah. How do I to do, do that beautiful, neat binding? Yeah. So what I thought we'd do is if we have a look at the binding first, yeah. and then if we get through that, then I could talk about like the sandwiching and quilting at the end. But Brilliant. I, I want to do the binding today if I can. So, right. So um, first thing I was going to mention is choosing your fabric that you use for binding, because I know people are a bit like, what, what colour shall I choose to go with it? Yeah. So the way I do it is um, I'll pick out a like a bright colour or a bold colour out of my quilt top design mm -hmm. and then I'll use that for my binding because it kind of brings it in together. And um, so that's how I would um, choose which, which fabric I was gonna use. You can use um, a solid colour, so the same all the way the same colour all the way round, mm -hmm. or you can use scrappy. So if you've got like um, a quilt with lots of different fabrics in, you can just cut two and a half inch strips of what you've got left um, and then um, just join them together so it looks, so it's yeah. all in keeping. Um, so I've got some different examples of stuff here. So for example, and it's all about how you cut your fabric as well. So for example, I've got um, this fabric here, which has got stripes on it. Mm -hmm. And um, from that, I've kind of got, from the same fabric, I've got these different sorts of effects. It's just the way you cut them. Wow. So this one was cut, um, obviously, that way. Mm -hmm. This one was cut that way, mm -hmm. and then this one was cut on the bias. Right. So, um, so there's lots of different looks that you can create from just one fabric. This is what I'm thinking about with the with the panel. Is that again? If you were to cut this way, yeah. you'd get a different look again, wouldn't you? If you yeah. were to go, if you were to look at your that way, you would have the stripes in between. Yeah. Or if you were to use these, and again, scrappy bindings using the different colours, yeah. you'd get like an ombre around the edge of your, your quilt. Yeah, so I've done I've done that here. So oh, all nice. I've done is with this, which I'll show you how to do in a bit, is um, I've just joined them together mm -hmm. and just cut them on the diagonal um, and just created that. So it's, not, it's quite subtle, yeah. but it gives you the variation. Nice. Right, okay, we'll come back to that one then. Yeah. So we're gonna look at the... Uh, that how you cut fabric can change the, the look of it. Yeah, well what, what I'll do first is if I just show you how to do 
do the actual binding and join the pieces together because I think sometimes that's a bit... Do you generally always use two and a half inch strips for binding? Some people use two and a quarter, mm -hmm. um, but I like to do, use two and a half um, because you can make sure that you've got it right round the back. Right. Um, so there's more room if you do, yeah. you do your seam a bit wide when you're stitching okay. it on. So what I've done is I've taken... So imagine these are full lengths. Okay. Just push them in. Oh, slowly. sorry. No, we're all good. See if we can see them on the overhead camera for you. There you go. Move this out of the way. Move that one. Can you see that, Paul? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So all you do is you take one of your fabrics and then you take, an, take your second one that you want to join on and you put it right side down, right sides together across the corner. Now, I, you, I normally do a little bit of overhang because it seems to work out better for some reason, but that's just the way I do it. So make sure they're at a sort of a right, right angle. angle. I mean, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to measure it or anything to check. And then all you do then is just draw a line across here, like that. And then I'm just gonna stitch along that line there. Stitch on the line. Yes, yes on okay. the line, yep. Yeah. I always get confused whether I'm stitching a quarter of an inch to the side of it, that's what the half square triangles, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you, you do have to think about these things, don't you? Right. Now you've got your walking foot on. Do you just yes. leave that on all the time? Um, well, I've d normally I'd, I'd use my standard foot to do this, but I didn't want to be changing the yeah. foot. Um, but you can do it with a, with a walking foot. Some people keep that on all yeah, the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I do just do it with a standard foot and then but you always quilt and apply your binding on a quilt with, um, with your walking foot because right. it stops the fabric kind of dragging and pulling away, the bottom and top pulling away from each other. And um, that comes as standard with the 680 machine, by the way, that comes as standard, which is brilliant yeah. because I know a lot of machines don't. <gasps> yeah. So I'm just going to sew this with a normal um, stitch length. You haven't pinned it. You don't need to necessarily no, be pinning No, I find the pinning just gets in the way, really. Um, so I'm just using a normal stitch length for that. And then when you quilt or apply your binding, then you use a slightly bigger stitch. So I normally use about a 3.2. I love the, uh, do you love the sloth? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so sloth. cute. Sloth or sloth. I've never heard anybody call it a sloth, but Victoria I told have, me that, yeah. yeah. I call really? it a sloth. Sloth. It's like grass and grass, isn't it? Right, so all I'm going to do now... Let's just bring this up. Uh... I'm not abiding by Paul's rule, am I? <laughs> in the end of here. Can you hear him in there? <laughs> yeah. I see you. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do now is just, there's my stitch line, and I'm just going to cut a quarter of an inch seam there. Okay. And then what you do is you put it on your pressing mat, Just finger press it open and press it like that. Okay, now the reason we press the seams open is because when you put it together to stitch it on, you've got your seams there, so they're not on top of each other like they would if you sewed it straight. So that reduces the bulk. Right, okay. So you don't have a big bulky bit on your binding, which is also hard to sew through as well. Okay, so all you do then is just continue doing exactly the same thing. So just add another right sides together, draw the line, cut it off, and then open it up. And then you just keep keep adding to it for as many as you want. I was going to say, so how many, how do you sort of know how long you go? Do you measure around the perimeter of so your quilt? So you measure around your perimeter of your quilt and then you and then you add to it. So you've got to take into consideration your um, corners. Of course. And then you also need some um, crossover along the bottom where you're going to join the um, join the ends together. Right. So and you also need go. to think as well. So if I were to do binding that was, the strips were this short, mm -hmm. and you've obviously got to take into consideration that you're going to lose quite a bit because you've, you've got your diagonal joins. Yeah. So you're going to need a lot more length if you're doing it like this mm -hmm. versus doing it in a whole strip that's with the fabric. Right, I'm with you. Have I made that clear? Yeah, absolutely. I do like the idea of doing the scrappy binding like this. It does look nice with the different colours, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it does, it does. Right. So that's, that's the first bit. So you just keep adding to it as much as you want. So that's called scrappy binding, is it? 
it, it, it's kind of it's called scrappy binding if you've got different fabrics. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it can be. You can yeah. call it what you want, can't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> so then, what you do is you take your length. Actually, what I should do is cut these little ears off. Would you go along and just do that? Get yourself a bit of a production line yeah. going, and yeah. Okay. And all I'm going to do now is fold this right sides together. and press. Now what I normally use a steam iron on this just to make sure I've got a crisp edge. Okay, so you just press all along and then once I normally... Once you've sewn them all together, once you've got a really yeah. long... Okay. Yeah, and then I just like get a, get a piece of card or something and just wrap it round so yeah. it keeps it all neat and not creased. Right. Right, so that's the first phase. Oops. Mind yourself on that iron. Right. Next is, we're gonna, so you've got your binding ready in your strip. Right. And so we're gonna sew it onto our quilt. So I'm gonna try and get to the quilting bit if I can. But just briefly, when you've sandwiched your quilt, so you've got your front and your back on with your wadding in between, mm -hmm. you've done your quilting on the front, however you wanna do it. Um, and then you wanna just kind of like baste around the edge because it does make it more stable and keeps the layers together. So I always just go around the edge. Um, okay, so let's, let's put this on, shall we? Right, so when you start off, what you need to do, it, it's obviously all dependent on the size of your quilt because you could be doing a cushion or a quilt. Um, so it's the same principle anyway. So what I do is I'd start sewing about there and then I'll make sure I give myself nice, a nice long overhang because when, the, when you come in this direction, when you've gone round, you want to be crossed over. By like that Like about that. Yeah. Really? Yeah, because it makes it a lot easier, in, uh, easier at the end. Ah, okay. Gosh, I've not been even anywhere near enough of a tail then. I've just tried and like squeeze them in together. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, there's different ways you can join the ends, um, but I think this way is, is neater, which That's I'm going to show you. Brilliant. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start sewing um, just a generous kind of quarter of an inch. Um, I just eyeball it, really. I don't okay. measure it or anything. Um, from here. Right, are you on the front of your quilt or on your back Sorry, of your quilt? Sorry, yeah. So I am on. There are two ways you can do this. So at the moment, I'll show you how to do it on the front, but you can equally do this on the back as well. Right. So if I were to do it on the front, I'd pull it back to the back and then hand sew it along the back. If I'm doing it on the, if I'm sewing it onto the back, back and bringing it to the, the front, front, then I'd top stitch around the edge. Right. That's generally how I do it. Okay. But I'll show you how to do all that after. And is it just how much time you've got or it, yes, what quilt definitely. it is? Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So if you're doing like an heirloom quilt or something like that, you might want to hand stitch the back. Yeah. Um, but when I'm making up samples and things like that, I just top stitch around yeah. the edge, which actually looks really nice. So it's not it's not really that much so of a So you're not compromise. starting at a corner, are you? You're starting in... So I'm starting a bit in and I'm just okay. going to back stitch mm -hmm. and then sew up to the edge. Right, let me show you on here because I don't think we're going to be able to see it very well on the sewing machine. So what I'm... So as I'm sewing along here, so I'm coming in this direction. So I'm sewing along here, right? When I get to this, this near this corner, what I do is I fold this back like that. Ah, come here. This yellow, by the way, is still from the panel, from the sunset yeah, panel, it is. isn't it? Yeah. That's beautiful colour. So I fold that back just to give me a crease line here, okay? And then when I stitch, I'll draw this on. I'm going to stitch down to just where that crease line is. So the crease line's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just stitch to there and then back stitch. Okay, I'll do this on the sewing machine, but I don't know how well you're going to see it. So I'll just show you like this Thank at you. the moment. Okay, and then you take it, so you cut your thread and you take it off your machine. Okay. Yeah. Then you fold back on your original crease again. So this is how you get those beautiful mitered corners, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Right. So fold back. Yeah. And then you fold back that way. Okay. So you've got so you've got that. Right. Yeah. Now what you're going to do is stitch along here. So I start just in slightly. About a quarter of an inch in. Yeah. Back stitch right to the edge and then continue along there and then carry on sewing and then carry on sewing until you get to your next corner right. so then as, as you're approaching this corner 
Mm -hmm. You then do exactly the same. So you're folding back your, to get your crease, so you know where to stop. And then you repeat what we've just done. I'm following you, we're yeah? all following it. Okay. And it's, it's raw edge to raw edge, isn't That's it? That's yeah? right, yeah, okay. yeah. There are different, there are different sorts of binding you can, you can do. So you can do, um, single binding or double binding, but we'll just concentrate on double today because I think that's the most common. But you can do this on cushions and bags and things yeah. like that. So it's not just quilting. No, this is such a transferable skill, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Right. So again, I'm gonna um, start with my stitch length um, longer. So it's, it's about, I'm gonna set it to about three, three just because there's quite a lot of fabric for it to go through and it just, make, just makes it a bit easier so on the machine. So this is where your walking foot comes in handy yeah. as well. Now, you, as well with this machine, you can slow your, your speed right down. As you get to that corner, you want to have full control, yeah. don't you? Yeah, exactly. And you've got it that the needle's down, so it stops with the needle in. Yeah, yeah. So once I hit that crease, yeah. I'm just going to backstitch a couple of times. So and take cut. it off the, yeah, and cut it. Yeah. So then I'm folding it back along the original crease line. Hey, I'm getting the hang of this now, aren't I, with this camera? <laughs> yeah, um, you're brilliant. We love you. <laughs> and then I'm folding it back like that. Mm -hmm. Right. I need a clip. Here we go. I've saw some, I did see some clips. Yeah. Here. There you go. Oh, here we go. Oh, by the way, we've got a little bit of an issue this morning, but I'm not going to stress about it because they are available on the web. We've got Wonder Clips. We're so excited. Uh, and they're, they're brand new and they've not arrived here physically in the building. But I know that you can get them on our website. Look. So they are here. Pack of a, uh, 50 and a pack of 10. So the pack of 50. Have you got the graphics of the 50? There you go. So these are the official Clover wonder clips they are multi-colored and they are brilliant for banding so the ones that are very very good quality with markings on they've got measurements on the underneath as well so they are they are built to last they're quality to last i know so many bag makers that absolutely love these uh, demos like this it saves so much faff and time from pinning doesn't yeah, it but definitely. binding this is really oh, yeah handy. definitely definitely so you wonder clips for 50 of them. It's going to go a very long way, £28.99. Free to call from a uh, landline or mobile on the free phone line number, or you can check out on the web. Alternatively, if you just want to have a go, just dip your toe in maybe with the wonder clips, then we've got an option where you can get 10 of them for £7.99 as well. Multicoloured wonder clips. So uh, I don't I know, I know the picture looks like they're all red on there, but they will be all multicolored, which is pretty. Just seven pounds ninety nine for your ten multicolor clover wonder clips. These are really beautiful quality. We wanted to source you the best ones, and we asked a lot of the experts of which ones they found were the best. And it was the Clover Wonder Clips. You're going to be able to use these time and time again for so many different projects. And and they're good as well if you don't want to put pins through things. So, for ah, example, like a PU leather or, yeah, or yeah. whatever, um, then you can good just boy. clip it rather than make holes in stuff as well. Okay. So, I folded it on the diagonal again, and then I folded it back along that line. So, I'm going to... Go in slightly, back stitch, and then carry on. Where are you clipping? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to clip there just to hold it. Okay. I would have got to the machine and then gone, I need to clip it. <laughs> okay. So what I'm doing as well is I'm, I've got my needle positioned so that the edge of the foot lines up with the edge of the fabric. So I've just moved my needle across. I'm with you. Yeah, so it makes it easier so you're not having to think about it too much. Right, so I'm going to Sorry, back stitch. Sorry, can't see that at home. So if I just take that off. Right, so that corner's on now. Mm -hmm. So all you do is you manoeuvre it round. Turn it, obviously you do all your quilt first okay. um, before you start doing this, but I'll just show you. Oh, sorry, Paul. Oh, sorry. How are we going? Is that all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So then all you do is bring it together and you've got your 
nice mitre oh, like that. Nice. Yeah. That is so professional, isn't it? When you spend all of the time on your patchwork, on yeah, your, yeah. you know, the front of your quilt. Yeah. It can be a bit of a stress to make sure that yeah. you've got your binding looking yeah, really exactly. sharp. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is as well, um, if you don't feel confident with it, have a go on something small like a yeah. test piece first okay. rather than cracking on with your quilt in case you We can always unpick it anyway. But, it. Um, but yeah, and, and also as well, if you forget how to... Unless you're doing quilts regularly, you will yeah. forget how to join the ends and stuff like that. So it's useful having things like this where you can just refer back to it on YouTube and things like that. So Absolutely. That you can Absolutely. You'll remember be able to watch this back and just pause it and keep doing it yeah. along with Victoria at home. Hello, Jean. Jean's comment on Facebook. What Hello. did she say? Sorry, Hannah. So clever and creative. Such lovely ideas. Oh, said. thank you. Thank you for your messages. Oh. Um, so what I thought I'd show you now is how to join the end. So obviously you go round the whole thing. Okay, so keep repeating exactly yeah, keep the same. keep repeating that. And then you will have your two... Two big tails. Dangly bits. Okay. Okay, so what you do then is... So I'm locating about the middle here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going off the middle slightly. Okay. And then I'm going to chop that end off like that. It's nice having pattern fabric actually, isn't it, for binding? I'm just looking at all of your examples and it does look really nice having the bit of a print. Yeah, yeah. I've always just presumed that you use solid fabric for binding. Yeah, yeah. And it yeah. does work really well just having a, a subtle print. So creative. Right, so I've just cut that off roughly just past the centre, mm -hmm. okay? And then I'm going to bring this one across and you want to make sure this is nice and flat. Okay, and then I'm just going to kind of offset it so I can see where that end is. Now, the bit I've chopped off, what I'm going to do is open that out and then position that on there so I'm, I know the distance between that little tail that I've got there and this bit here. Okay, and then I'm going to, you can mark it or you can just cut it off. Okay, so that distance that overlaps is the width of your binding. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what you do is you take your one tail and position it like that. Hang on. And then you take your other tail and you position it like that. Now at this point, because I, when I first started doing this and wasn't doing it regularly, I was having it attached to all different directions and it was all Feels just a bit alien a bit wrong. to do, but yeah. then when you get, yeah. when you've done a few... Yeah, exactly. So normal. don't beat yourself up if you can't remember how to do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold that there and just double check that when that goes together, that is going to, that's right. Okay? It's going to run flat. Yeah. Okay, so... Need some pins. I've got flower head pins here. Oh, can we do those? Yes, they're on the website. They're on the website. We can put the graphics in for those. Oh, the flower head pins are lovely, aren't they? I know so many people have asked us to get those in. We've been asking you, what is it that you would like to see? Why do you like the flower head ones? Um, they're just, they're kind of a good sturdy pin um, and nice and long. And you can also see them as well because they've got the big heads on yeah that's so they're kind of like my go-to pin quite often actually you end up leaving them in don't you so yeah. it's it's really handy to be able yeah. to see them uh they are your flower head pin how many did you get in there 100 brilliant yeah 100 for 10 pounds 99 getting the quality of course you've got the name clover of course going to be popular just 10 pounds 99 they are available on the phone or of course on our website as well and it's something as well that you don't really i hardly ever rebuy them because they don't kind of bend as much as a lot of oh. pins um but they're still sort of yeah they're just really nice they're nice and long actually but still fine aren't yeah, they yeah exactly yeah. very nice thank you okay so all i've done now is just pinned it like that and then i'm going to draw a line from the cut so if you can see there i've got the corner of that fabric there to the corner of here okay yeah and i'm just going to draw that straight across and then i'm just going to stitch along the line okay you're keeping your pins in yeah right let me just position them my needle back into the middle hang on do you ever find that it can chew up your fabric when you're starting like this? 
Do you start on the fabric, right? Because on the edge? because I'm starting along a solid kind of solid line. Yeah. It it doesn't. If I was to sew it from that point here, uh -huh. say for example, like with patchwork or whatever, then it has more tendency to chew up. Okay. Um, so that's why you tend to chain piece as well, because it reduces the risk of that. Right. I've just got to get my needle back to the middle. Hang on, sorry. <laughs> That'll do. Right, and I'm just going to stitch across it. On the line again? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then you just remove your pins. And then, as you can see, so that's working. Ah, no, yeah, it makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? Do you need to trim away any yes. of that extra bolt? So what we're going to do now, so before you trim it away, just double check that it, you've got it on the right okay. way around. Because as soon as you cut it, that's it. Okay, so I'm going to, again, just do a quarter of an inch away from the edge. And then I'm just going to finger press that open. Open seams again? Yeah, to reduce your bulk. And then fold that down. And then all you do then is go back on your machine and stitch. <laughs> and then I, all I do is just, so when you start, and when you start your binding, you do a little back stitch. And then when you finish your binding, you do a little back stitch there. So you've got the stability at this mm -hmm. point. And then all I do is start on these stitch on these stitches here, do a little back stitch there, and then just stitch along there and back. And then you've got your binding sorted. Oh, and you wouldn't know that that was the end. No, you wouldn't know. Especially in a large quilt, you wouldn't see the join, no, would you, at no, all? No, because you've already got your joins from where you've joined your fabric together. So it And just I suppose having invisible. it on a diagonal is less obvious than a join like that, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, yeah. A vertical yeah, join. Yeah, there's no bulk. So, so that's that. Right. Brilliant. I'll show you how to, how you can, different ways of stitching it. While we're setting the up for that fold next there. bit, yep. uh, they're, the, they're the pins, they're the pins that we were talking about. Some of our brand new products, literally fresh in, literally about 10 seconds ago. You've got a hundred of your flower head pins, £10.99. As Victoria said, they don't really uh, bend as much as, you know, different pins out there. <laughs> they are, of course, when you're looking at um, clover, You've got that quality, you have got that quality, you've got that name, you've got that brand. Uh, with the sharp finished pins that glide through fabric smoothly, they're really lovely and long pins as well. They really are. And, and just having that flower head, as Victoria said, they're visible. I know it sounds, you know, silly, but it is going to be handy little things like that that you wear at the sewing machine, you can see them to take them out very quickly. £10.99. The, um, the, the other product that we were just mentioning then is the, is the Wonder Clips. Uh, now, these Wonder Clips, they come like this. I'm going to just dive straight in and open these up because these are the big 50 pack. There's a smaller pack on the website. I think there's a pack that's got 10 in. Um, but these are great because, I mean, for bag makers, dressmakers. Oh, this is the exciting thing. I'm so bad at opening... Um, <laughs> You know, like cereal boxes, I always get told off for opening them like this. I'm trying to be careful. And I use these yeah. as well for other things like... Um, Toothpaste, I've seen somebody on the fan page using yeah, the rolling so, And as well, I don't go running there very often, but when I do, I, my earphone cable flaps okay. around, so I just clip it with one of those on my top. <laughs> this is what we love about the fan page as well. So many people um, <laughs> messaging what they're using for. I like that you've got your little uh, solid nice box, storage box yeah. as well. You're not going to lose them. They're lovely, aren't they? And can I show you the measurements on here? So, I don't know how close you can get, Joe, but they've also got little markings as well. Little markings so that you can, uh, you, you've got the guideline on there. Just £28.99. So if you're clipping something very, very precisely, you've got those guidelines. They're lovely, aren't they? And they're really nice and handy to keep them. 
uh, to travel to your classes, travel to your workshops on the go. You don't have that annoying moment when you're halfway through the binding and don't have your clips. £28.99 for 50 of them as well. Brilliant. Okay, right, so I thought I'd show you how you can attach the, the folded bit, as it were. Okay, right. so if I've stitched, like I just have, my bind into the front of my quilt. That's it, thank you. Okay, so I'll stitch that on like that. And then I'm going to take this and push this, turn your quilt over and push it to the back. Right. Okay, now you'll have your stitch line across here. Obviously, you wouldn't do it in blue, but I'm just doing it to, to show so you can see it. Um, How taut do you pull this over? Because mine can sometimes get slightly warped because I'm, I don't know whether I'm pulling it too tight or... Yeah, you might have, I mean, you might have done your um, kind of seam allowance a yeah. little bit too much. Okay. Um, I mean, I tend to wear air on going slightly shorter because if you, if you do have a problem with that, you don't want to, you don't want to be showing your stitch line. And like you say, you yeah. don't want to be, but I mean, I, it's, it's nice to have it nice and tight and then you get kind of a, a chunky yeah. binding. You don't kind of want it all limp and... Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do is... On a on a quilt, I would have my wonder clips. Mm -hmm. we Here we go. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go for pink. So what I'd do is I would um, use my wonder clips and just kind of put them about that distance away from each other, probably for about a couple of foot, maybe. Okay. Um, and then I would be stitching on my binding. Right, so all I've done is taken a piece of thread and tied a knot in the end of it. Okay, and I'm just gonna, so I'm gonna show you two different techniques that you can do. So this is, this is the hand stitching method. Okay, so I'm just gonna go up and into my binding, grabbing it from the back. And then I'm just gonna do like a whip stitch. So you wanna be making sure that you don't, don't show your stitches on the front. So you're just literally grabbing just the backing the fabric, fabric and a bit wadding? of your wadding as well, if okay. you can. But it's not a major issue if you, and then obviously you'd use a, a thread that was complementary to your You're fabric. You're using a blue so one weren't... for telly purposes, aren't yeah. you? So but in this instance, would you go with your cre a cream colour? So I would probably use like a, a, cre a cream yeah. colour. Yeah, yeah, okay. I would. Um, so again, we're just going back down from where we put our stitch in the, in the binding, going into the backing fabric, and then again up. And you don't need to do these really close together either. You can kind of, I mean, on, on a quilt, I just probably do like over, over a quarter of inch, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if you're doing a smaller project, it's better to do them a bit smaller. Okay, so you just carry on going like that and you've got those little stitches. Or you can do a ladder stitch. Like you said, if you're making an heirloom quilt, it's quite nice to sit down at the end of your yeah. making quilt. Everything's been quite fast, so to yeah. sit in front of the television and just do a bit yeah. of slow sewing, isn't I it? I love stitching the binding on. Some yeah. people absolutely hate it, but I really like doing it. Okay, so to do a ladder stitch, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and take... Can we see that? We're going to get a bit tighter so you can see a little bit clearer. Okay, oh, that's good, isn't it? Okay, so we're going in the bottom fabric only to yeah. create a stitch. Okay, and then I'm going to go into my... Oh, look at my shaky hands. And then I'm going to go into my top fabric. So I'm going along the fold. So I'm going... You can't see that very well, can you? So I'm going... That's better. Into so I'm going that fold. Into the, yeah. into the fold. Oh, bless Paul. Can you hear him sneezing in there? And again, yeah. I'm taking... I'm going across the um, backing fabric. Right, so this one you hardly see the stitches. You hardly at see all. the stitches. It's a bit harder. It's a bit more tricky to do. Like it's a bit more time-consuming than just whipping through it, but it does give you a nice effect. And I mean, you can't even see that, can you? It and depends what you blue. want, though, because that gives you quite a hand-finished yeah. look to it, doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah, you can hardly see those, and no. you're using a bright blue. Yeah, yeah. And that's a ladder stitch. That's a ladder stitch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now the other thing you can do, which I do if I need to do it quickly. is I'll stitch my binding on the back yeah, and then I'll bring it round to the front and then I'll just do a top stitch along there. But with that, what you want to do is make sure that your um, folded 
piece here is oh hang on is way beyond where where your fabric that you've sewn is if okay. you get my drift so when you're stitching it stitching it along there you don't want your stitches to be going through this okay here. you want it to be going along I'll, I'll show you it'd be easier to do that than explain it wouldn't it right So again, just make sure it's well over the, your original stitch line. So this shouldn't be going on your patchwork front quilt. So this is, this is I've the got, front. My, got my thread a bit dodgy there, but and you, you get the idea. Okay, this is the front so this is quilt. the front of the quilt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so you've, you've top stitched along there. And then on the back, you will get this line. But right. if you've used a cream, then that you won't even in. see it. Yeah. So what I would do if I wanted, um, if I wanted that blue, say, you could do the top, your top thread blue, mm -hmm. and then you could put your bobbin thread ah. in as white, and then you've got you've got that. Good idea. Like that. Right. Brilliant. How are we doing for time? How are we doing for time? Ten minutes. Oh my word! Right, can we swap this over, Vic? Because yeah. I know that you needed a bigger, a bigger mat earlier. So I know some of us are working at home and have, you know, smaller, smaller mats to take to, to workshops. But if you have got the space, they always say to oh, get yeah. the biggest mat that your yeah. space allows. Why? Why is that? Is that one got? Um, well, you just got more versatility then. And when you when you're cutting, kind of full width of fabric and stuff like that, well, obviously when it's folded over, then you, you've got all that space. I suppose you don't want to be moving your mat whilst you're cutting no, your fabric. No, exactly. You? And if you're cutting stuff like, if you're doing, say, bias binding, the bigger the mat you've got, the easier it is. So this was £37.99. It isn't something you're going to be able to, you're not going to have to buy another one and then another one and another, another one. I know yesterday we had uh, the Alpha one, which we had the sticky mat adhesive, which completely sold out. So it's our first big cutting mat, which is lovely. It was one of the first purchases for us. We know how important it is. It's really exciting for us to have our first big cutting mat in stock. Um, I mean, I don't think you can see even on the, uh, uh, on the overhead because it's so big, but it's £37.99 pence, and there's no extra postage and packaging, even though it is slightly awkward size isn't it we're not going to charge you for that so it's still only one pmp all day long three pound 95 including sewing machine cutting mats items like this which is brilliant so you've okay. got a nice big surface yeah, now do you need a, a pressing mat still though um no i think i'm all right maybe. in a minute thanks okay right so i just wanted to touch on because obviously i'm running out of time fast and i've got loads of stuff i could oh, talk about this all day I know. I know so that straight edge binding, right. which we've just bias done. Bias binding. What's yeah. the difference with okay. bias binding? So with a piece of fabric, you have got different directions, which mean different things. So say this was my selvage, okay, across here. Mm -hmm. The warp goes across the width here. Yeah. Okay. The weft is that way. And they all have different kinds of stretch in them. The bias goes across the diagonal. So look how much stretch you got in that right. layer. Yeah. Okay. So when you're doing just a normal rectangular binding, mm -hmm. um, then you'd use what we've just done, cutting the straight strips along that way or that way, okay? Now, if you wanted to do something that has got a curved edge, so like this, okay, then you would um, cut along the bias. Right. So to do that, you would take your ruler and then you'd find your 45 degree line on it here okay okay then you position that on and you cut across okay and then what you do let's do it okay and then all you need to do then is cut two and a half inch strips from that bi that bias line okay and just keep going but obviously you won't use the corners because then the the fabric starts getting really yeah. short then, which yeah. becomes a bit of a Keep pest. Keep hold of that though, absolutely. So you just cut a load of strips like that. So and then to join these. For, for, for any curved edges you yeah. do this, yeah. right. With so you. then to join these, what you do is you put... 
So you kind of line them up like that mm -hmm. and then you put them right sides together and then I've just drawn this line on just to show you. So this, where these little ears are, you need to have a quarter of an inch from there to where they meet right. the fabric. So there's a little overhang on both yeah. sides. Yeah. So you stitch that together, flip it open, and then you cut your ears off. And then you, again, do your Same folding method. it, wrong sides together, but then you've got all this stretch so you can get round corners. Okay. Would you need to do a bias binding if you're going around a tight yes. curve like that? You won't be able to get round a, round a curve with straight binding. Right. Um, and when you're applying, applying this, do, don't pull it like that because when if you do that, your, your quilt will kind of curl up at the corners. Ah. Um, so you just need to make sure you've got it placed nicely on there and just don't pull it. That would be my tip on that one. Right, brilliant. Okay. We are racing through I know. these now. I'm so I want to sorry. show you these ones. Oh, we saw a bit of a sneak peek of these on Facebook, yes. didn't we? This is making your binding a little bit more fancy, fancy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. We love it. Oh, actually, Hannah wrote down the word jazzy on her, <laughs> on her sheet earlier on. I love these. That was so cute. And they're so these. easy. These would be nice on like smaller projects as well, like bags or. Yes. Um, oh, I love the little bunting one. That's so cute. Right, okay, speedy, speedy demo. So I would say that if you're using things like this, don't nest, don't, I wouldn't put that on a quilt, say. I'd put it on a bag or something like, like that. Like a pom -pom because, trim. Yeah, because if you wash this, you don't know how that's going to wash um, and it might kind of shrink up a bit or whatever. So you want to be using, on just use your, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I sh I'll just quickly whiz through a couple of these. So with the rickrack one, which is this one. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? There you go. There's your rick rack. Yep. Just a little scalloped edge. Yep. What you do on that is you get your rick rack. This is quite a wide one. Now I would, because you don't want this mm -hmm. showing anywhere, I would just pull that up slightly and then you can stick that. So you can either um, do a basting stitch or I just put some glue across the top. And oh, this is a like product that. I keep asking the buyers. Yeah, we're getting in. We are this. getting it in. We are on it. <gasps> That's a, it's a must. I use it all the time. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there to keep it in place. And then you basically just pop your binding on top, stitch it on like we've done already, and then fold it back, ah. and then put it across the back so that's so simple so all simple. you're doing is just sticking that down before you stitch it on but what I'd recommend is if you just do a little test first just to check your seam and um, your, your seam allowance is right okay. so you get your nice finish on your bumps oh that would love you that would look so pretty won't it it's just a lovely yeah. start touch. could you use this one on a quilt this technique I, I, I'm not sure I don't, I, I perhaps wouldn't use rickrack because like I say, if, if, you, if you're washing it quite a lot, yeah. um, then you don't know how this is necessarily going to react to washing. Depends what you're use it for. Yeah, so exactly. wall hangings, yeah. this would be ideal, bags again, yeah. ideal. Or like a decorative cushion or yeah. something like that. Nice. Okay, so that's that one. This one looks nice as well. That's this that one. one. Yeah. Oh, that's really beautiful. Yeah. So again, so, you can pick out the colours from your binding fabric and so just use it as an accent. So they're two separate fabrics, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. So again, this is really easy. So this is a... Is that a little Tilda print? Um, no, it's just I don't even know what oh. it is. So this is an inch wide Cute. piece of fabric and I've just pressed it wrong sides together. And then again, you can either just glue that or... Um, Tack it, it down, down like an eighth of an inch away. And then again, we're just gonna apply your binding as you normally would, and then you fold it back and you've got your Oh, I like that. Yeah. So this is a really good way of using up, you know, bits that you think are sort of scraps as well. Yeah. yeah. That just adds a really professional finish, doesn't yeah. it? How long have we got? About three minutes. Okay, right. So to make I'll just quickly show you this one. So to make these ones, so they're kind of like oh, prairie that little points. Bun that's like little bunting look. Oh, that's so cute. So if I, I if I say made a cushion, like a 
kind of baby cushion or something like that. I might just put three oh. just on one edge around right, the board okay. so rather this than the need whole to be lot. All the way around. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. And you could do them different sizes if you wanted. You could have them overlapping more than that. So all you would do with that is take a. I've got a square of fabric there, two and a half inch square. So again, you could use your um, jelly roll. No, no, yeah, they're, not called, yeah. they're called design rolls, aren't they? Um, you fold it. Uh, Wrong sides together. I don't know why I'm struggling with wrong sides together today. <laughs> wrong sides together. And then you fold like it. Sides together, isn't it? That's and then you fold it that way again. Okay. Okay. And you give that a good press. And you, I also, um, what do you call it? Spray starch that just to make give it a really good crisp finish. Lovely. And then where's my other one's gone? So I'll just do another quick one and show you how to put them together. This would be perfect with the sunset panel as well. Two and a half inch Yeah, squares. like a, like a dark, a medium, and a light. Oh, nice. Yeah. There's your sunset panel. Just while Vic's um, folding some more, it's absolutely flying out. It's huge. The amount of colours that you've got on there, you're, and they are they are very very wide as well, with the geometric prints on all of those different colours. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so what I've done now is. Just position that on there, just pin it. Okay, and then you take your other folded one mm -hmm. with your opening bit, and then you just pop that in there so they overlap to about a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Okay, so that's about a quarter of an inch from there to there. And if you want it more overlap, then obviously so you can see the overlapping on it, you just bring them in and then you'll get a different effect. So it'll look more like that then. Mm -hmm. Okay. 30 seconds, 30 <gasps> seconds. Can you wear them yes. in there? Sorry. And then again, oh, all you do, stitch across there, fold it back and then you've got that effect. And then you can sew buttons on oh. or little bows or anything you want. Oh, it looks so cute, doesn't it? I love that technique. I'm, I feel like we're going to see this a lot on the, uh, yeah. the fan page as well. And that, that would look really nice as well on the, back, on the back of a cushion along the... Oh, zip, um, where the zip is, or the fold. The fold, is, yeah. yeah. So on an envelope back, if you just finish it off with that binds in, it just sets it off and makes it look oh, a bit more professional. That would look gorgeous. And really easy, again, just two and a half inch squares. Yeah. Because they don't all need to be matching. It looks really, no. really beautiful. Very jazzy, as Hannah likes to keep. <laughs> she keeps saying the word jazzy in my head. Very jazzy. Oh, thank you so much. We thought, do you know what? We'd have loads of time. We're going to go I through know, everything. I know, we had loads more stuff as Come well. back, please come yeah. back and do another one. We definitely need to do a two-hour special with you. So thank you so, so thank much. You. Uh, we'll see you very soon. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, remember, you can watch back all of these tips, remember, on, uh, on YouTube. You can watch back whenever you get home. Uh, whenever you get your, your products home, of course, you can watch them on YouTube. Or, of course, the website, if you want to purchase any of the bits and bobs that you've seen from Victoria's show, it's www.sewingstreet.com. Now, just before we go, a couple of new items that have just literally arrived in, hot off the press. Do you know what we might do? Because I know this is going to be majorly rushed. Tomorrow, I'm on my own all hour. I'm on my own for the whole for the whole of the show. So hopefully, I'll come back and we'll do a bit more of a demo and, and talk about this a bit slower. But we do have the most amazing, amazing deal. As I told you, with Fiskars, we had a really phenomenal meeting with them before we came live with, with the scissors that I know hundreds of you have already purchased. This is another brilliant, brilliant deal. So those of you that have seen one of these before, it's a bit like a guillotine. It's got a rotary blade, a 45 millimeter rotary blade in there and it's gonna cut, well, layers of your quilting fabric with all of your measurements. Victoria was mentioning your 45 degree angle. These are all important measurements for quilters. Now, whether it be because you just wanna do a quick cutting or for time and ease, or whether it be because you feel unsure about using a rotary cutter, this is a completely concealed blade. And because you literally just need to use, you know, the pressure with your hand, it, if you have got dexterity issues, then this could be a different option of using that rotary blade really quickly, efficiently, and safely. Now, the reason that I wanted to show you this today, as I said, we will talk about this in a bit more detail tomorrow, but, for a limited amount of people, you're also going to get this for free. This is your free 
blade changing tool. It isn't just uh, usable for this tool. You can also use it with other Fiskars rotary cutters, which are the 45 millimeter ones. But the reason that I want to show it to you is because the amount of times I've, we were having a bit of a look online this morning, this can cost you over 30 pounds alone. This on its own, and this is a free gift. So it's not just one of those little novelty thimbles or seam rip or something. This is actually a really, really useful tool that can cost over 30 pounds. In fact, there you go. This one, in fact, has been reduced. It was already a brilliant price at 51 pounds 99. <laughs> and now it's been reduced, uh, 51 pounds 52, sorry. And then it's been reduced down to 36 pound 80. So that's a live comparison. I told you we have a fantastic relationship with Fiskars. We proved that, didn't we, with the scissors earlier on um, in the week. But, of course, the Fiskars... Uh, this is a John Lewis comparison. You can go to John Lewis. Uh, and you can get one of these. They're selling them. They're £28.50. £28.50. That is a free gift today with... Uh, the Fiskars rotary cutter and uh, and ruler combo. And look, it's got the nice little handle so you can hang this up in your workroom, ready to go, all of your measurements. £64.99. pence. We're going to talk about this a bit longer tomorrow, so do make sure if you want to see that in action, then make the most of it. If you love Fiskars, of course. They, they are a household name and have been uh, making cutting tools and... Uh, and machinery for centuries, centuries. There aren't many brands actually that have sort of stood that test of time. Fiskars have. Uh, they are renowned for quality and we really have got an amazing relationship with them. So when we were launching Sewing Street, they said, look, you need something really special for the customers. This is an introductory, and I have to keep stressing this whenever I show these, this is an introductory special price. You're looking at the most ridiculous price I've ever seen on Fiskars pair of scissors. They're gorgeous quality shears for £9.99. Dressmakers, bag makers, Victoria's face has just gone, what? Have you not seen these? No. They are a bargain. And you also get the little uh, case, so if you are on the move, there you go. I wish we had a camera then on Victoria's face. <laughs> Seriously, £9.99. Oh no, I don't think the camera goes round all that way. Um, but they really have the most beautiful noise, satisfying noise on a good pair of scissors. Uh, hundreds of you have already made the most of that introductory price. Every time I, I, I talk about these, I've under strict instructions that I have to keep mentioning, this is an introductory special price. That price does not reflect the scissors you are looking at. Uh, again, when I think of Fiskar scissors, they're normally $24.99, $29.99, and up and up and up. Uh, they are dressmakers, bag makers, quilters. We wanted to do a really special introductory offer for everybody, for everybody, not just quilters, not just dressmakers, something we all need and all use. And I know when I first started in the sewing world, uh, how protective we are of our scissors and how many we need for different uses. It's about having the right tools for the job, isn't it? So cutting into your fabric for the first time, you want to make sure you've got a nice pair of sh sharp scissors. And in fact, for the panels, actually, instead of using a rotary cutter, to have that really lovely control, I'd actually recommend these uh, when you're cutting into your lovely panels, which are available also on our website. This hour has absolutely flown by. Right, I hope everybody's learnt loads because we all have. Uh, remember, you can watch Victoria's show back on YouTube at any point as well. You can watch that show back. It's going to be loaded onto YouTube as soon as we finish. Uh, you're going to be watching over the next hour the machine, which obviously we haven't been able to see in depth with Victoria. We've been talking about some of the features and functions, but Jane Brogan is going to be going over. <laughs> it's not a very a, a glamorous shot there at the back of the machine. <laughs> It's a practice. Sorry, Joe. No offence. No offence. That was a glamour shot, Paul's saying. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to spin it around and we're going to talk about it with Jane Brogan over the next hour. So do make the most of that as there are a limited number with a five year warranty as well still available. So make the most of that. I will see you tomorrow morning. Same time, same place at 9am. See you there.